uh, for the for the next session, this is this is something I really like about running F Sharp Conf because we're always able to find someone who hasn't spoken at any of these big F Sharp things before and has something really interesting to say. Yes. So I think Lars. We we sort of found found out about his his talk uh, at one of the um, through one of the recommendations that we had, um, and uh, we've heard many great things about about your your talk and your practical experience with using F Sharp. So, so welcome, hi Lars. Thank you. Very nice to be able to join you guys. Nice to see you can and. You hear me uh, all right? Looking, yeah, we can hear you perfectly. So uh, we're looking you. forward so to your stuff, which will be change up some settings. Oh, we have some delay there. Can you hear us well? Now I can hear you. Nice, I nice. The technical over uh, right here. That's the F sharp conf. That's that's okay. Yeah. Like, we we are not allowed to do it without technical problems. It's, no, it's, and we also have a thunderstorm coming in right now. So hopefully, I will keep my power up. <laughs> okay, so finger crossed, and I'm, I'm sure you have a diesel generator, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so over to you. Do you have a screen to share? There it there is. You go. Perfect. Let's get started. Thank you. All right. So thank you for having me. My name is Lars, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how to handle a complex domain with a readable code, uh, and a little bit about how we use F# -sharp at my company at uh, Nurkart. Uh, I'll be focusing, uh, when focusing on the readability of your domain rules, it can make it uh, much easier to maintain and your extend your code base when modeling complex domains. So hopefully this will give a, give a jumping off point uh, in that direction. So just a little outline. I'll start by giving you a small introduction to our domain and what we are using it for. Then I'll talk a little bit about how we use F# -sharp and what is uh, is the best part of F# -sharp for us. Um, and then we'll, uh, as quickly as possible, dive into some code samples, which hopefully can make our review of how to use F# -sharp, um, as clear as possible, and maybe give you some ideas as well. So just a quick uh, part about me. I have a background in geospatial and uh, IT. It was this uh, small uh, study program here in Norway where I got to combine combine these two for a master's degree. And uh, I've been a professional developer for uh, a little over three years. And what might uh, separate me for from a lot of you guys uh, that work with F# -sharp is that uh, I have had most, or not, if not all, of my professional experience in F# -sharp. a little bit of C# -sharp in between, but for the most part, I've been working full time in F Sharp. The company I work for is called uh, Nordkart. It's a Norwegian uh, company uh, that uh, delivers uh, software solutions, mainly working in geospatial data and property data and all kinds of solutions on top of that, whether that is regulation plan maps for municipalities or 3D models for architects or anything you might base on geographic data. We are a little over 200 employees, and uh, uh, we run most of our te newer technology on um, .NET, mainly C Sharp, but a little bit of F Sharp. And uh, uh, also, we host uh, everything in Azure, and we're a Microsoft company. So if you look at our stack, and there's a Microsoft uh, um, Product, we are prob probably using it. So, just a little bit about the domain. It's actually property taxes that we are trying to solve here with uh, F Sharp. And this pro program has, uh, uh, or this problem we have uh, tried to solve for uh, four to five years now and worked on this, uh, uh, this, um, this uh, system. And uh, Property taxes, you might know of the, the concept. Uh, you, you own some real estate in the real world and you have to pay some taxes uh, on them. In Norway, these taxes are collected by the municipalities, which we have uh, over 300 of in Norway, of wildly different sizes. The smallest one is 200 inhabitants on a small island off the coast, while the largest one is Oslo with 700,000 inhabitants. and uh, 
these municipalities want to find out what uh, the properties in their area is worth so that they can collect taxes on them. So this is uh, also not a mandatory tax. Each uh, municipality chooses themselves what kind of properties they want to collect. Some just collect from commercial uh, real estate, while others collect from all uh, different kind of properties. So we have a, different, a few different data sources. We have the Norwegian Cadaster. For those unfamiliar with that term, it's the uh, nationwide register of who owns what and how big it is, basically. What kind of buildings are there? How big is the plot? And a lot of details. For some municipalities, we rely on data from the tax authorities. That tells us a little bit more, or it's an, a, a supplementary source of information. We also rely a lot on user input uh, from our solution out in the field, where people working for the municipality registers uh, any discrepancies in the data or, and registers uh, whether this property has a very nice view, so it should be worth more, or the, it's close to a highway, so it should be worth less, or something like that. And since we have such small and large municipalities with wildly different use cases, uh, we have a lot of configuration files that uh, streamline the service for each customer. So just a little glimpse of what you might output to the user. Here we have a building with uh, three floors um, with, um, uh, with different uh, prices and uh, square meters, how, how large each uh, floor is. And you can see this uh, ground floor where you have uh, the residence or the living quarters, and you also have a storage unit and a garage. And each of these we have uh, deduced that are different kinds of areas based on the source material, and, uh, and they have different values. And um, don't look too much at this, but this is basically the calculations that we end up in the end uh, where we can find out what the, the taxes are for this specific property. And the output of our system is uh, notification letters to the, the inhabitants, the tax calculations themselves that we use for uh, different purposes. There will be invoices uh, outputted. That's another team, but uh, to 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 collect the taxes for the municipality, and also a lot of reporting. Whether that's for the our customers, the municipalities, it's the government that wants to know how much a tax is collected, or it is uh, for the individual uh, inhabitant that wants to know what the taxes are on on their property. So is it complicated? Well, since we're working with taxes, it's a heavily regulated um, um, domain with uh, lots of uh, uh, rules and laws on how this is supposed to be done. And uh, there's also uh, some imperfect data, because even though we are very lucky in Norway to have a large uh, national data set with all the properties um, and, and how they look like, they are maintained by the individual municipality. So uh, the data quality war varies quite a lot uh, throughout the country. We have these very complicated corner cases of properties where you have much, even though like a, a simple property with just the plot and a small house is very easy to calculate. You have, you might have a mixed zoning. Uh, you might have a large apartment block with a, uh, with a store in the first or uh, the ground floor and a garage in the basement, which is owned by the different apartments up top uh, in different shares. Um, as I said, we also have a lot of variations in workflow. In some municipalities, there's just a few or a single person working on this, maybe part-time, while in the largest municipalities, there's uh, entire divisions dedicated to working on uh, the tax collections. And we also have this rule of equal and fair treatment uh, so, uh, regarding these taxes. Um, we, if two persons have the same uh, <laughs> the same uh, kind of property with the same size and the same location and everything, we want it to be the same taxes collected from them. 
And uh, if the taxes are not fair, uh, there is a large system built out for uh, inhabitants to be able to complain and correct it down if it's too high. So we really want it to be correct. And, uh, and uh, there's a lot of moving parts here that get in, forms quite a complex domain. So how are you using F-sharp? F-sharp is a multi-purpose language that can be used for many different use cases. But this was our first test of our first try into F-sharp. Uh, so it was very easy for us to by by using the interop between C-sharp and F-sharp to rely on our internal templates for setting up our controllers and some auxiliary systems that talk to the outside world. But we wanted to model our complex rules-driven domain in uh, F-sharp, uh, where we had uh, high requirements of correctness. Um, and there's also quite a lot of maths involved. So, so for this uh, purpose, F sharp was uh, perfect. We are also doing um, a model, our modeling based on events and uh, event sourcing. And uh, F sharp is a language that is well suited for that with uh, the discriminated unions that make sure that you can represent your different kind of domain events in a uh, very nice way. So just a little bit about correctness. The F-sharp type system is uh, very nice for allowing us to model different kinds of uh, values. We we have a lot of uh, integers and uh, floats and, and, and numbers and strings and uh, identities that we do not want to match. So being able to quickly spin up new types that represent different things that make sure that we don't mix them up is very important for, for our use. But uh, on to our main topic of tonight, uh, or today, if you're in the US, um, readability. We want uh, our code to be as readable as possible. We want it to be readable for our in-team domain expert um, that knows everything there is to know about property taxes so that they can quickly look at the code and give us some insight and feedback. We want our code to be um, understandable to our C-sharp friends inside and outside the team. But most of all, we want it for us people working in F-sharp on a daily basis to be able to quickly find uh, what we are taking care of and what we are not uh, handling right now. We want uh, to quickly find bugs. And we, um, yeah, we want to make sure that our day-to-day -day experience is as uh, nice as possible. We use most of our time reading code and not writing code, so we should optimize for that. All right, so let's jump into some code examples. Let's start with coding in Norwegian. This might be a bit controversial for some of you guys, but uh, we are working in a very Norwegian context with a lot of Norwegian regulations, Norwegian data sets, and this uh, this product will uh, will live in Norway for the for for its lifetime, and uh, we are also a company that is uh, primarily speaking in Norwegian. So for us, that's uh, that's not a huge cost to limit ourselves there. And uh, as you as we jump over to more understandable code, let's uh, since we are talking about readable code. Uh, Let's look at some code that is readable to you guys. You will see that I've, I've worked a little bit about uh, trying to translate very domain-specific terms in Norwegian to, to English. And uh, you can quite uh, quickly see some of our, the problems with uh, some of our events here. And we have this one, for instance. You have a taxation property created. And uh, while you might have understood that by now that when I'm talking about properties, we are talking about properties in the real world and not the properties of an object or whatever. But um, uh, we we lose some context when we translate from one language to another. And uh, another nice feature of us being able to talk about our domain in Norwegian and our code in English is that we can be very precise about which one we are talking about now. 
Are we talking about the properties in the domain or the properties in coding? Um, so we are trying to use our bilingual uh, strengths or as a strength and not as a as a weakness in this case. Also, you can see just a quick glance at how nice events can look like in uh, in uh, F sharp. Another example uh, of this translation uh, troubles is uh, this one with uh, the cancel out function, uh, where we have a, um, a cancel out function that takes a function that is function calculation and translate uh, transform this function into something else. And even though uh, PowerPoint is not the best of uh, IDEs, so you don't get a squiggly line under this function word. Uh, this is uh, not a uh, uh, valid code because function is a reserved keyword. And uh, by using the Norwegian words, they are seldom claimed by the, the language. So, so that's uh, nice. And uh, these functions are actually talking about what I was uh, touching upon earlier with the living quarters and the storage units and the garage uh, in, a, in a house. That's, that is the function in uh, the domain. What are you using some area for? Another part is that uh, the units of measure is, uh, as we use them here, that describes what kind of uh, decimal uh, number, in this case, we are talking about. We might model this in an, any number of ways uh, in F sharp, but this reads very nicely for uh, uh, for someone that is not working with code on a daily basis. So it it becomes really clear what we are modeling and what we are working with here. Another point I would like to uh, look on here is that you might see that this function uh, is a larger record with many, um, many uh, different properties. And uh, we uh, only choose to uh, talk about the, uh, or write about the, the things that change here. You, you, you might have change the whole whole thing and define every every field of the record but uh, we want to focus on the relevant part when we are doing this uh, steering out this canceling of, of this function calculation uh, so that's uh, one uh, nice thing about using this record with syntax is that you are able to focus on the, the interesting stuff here little noise and that's the the main topic here, really, with all of the things we do. We are trying to use the succinctness of F sharp and the the little boilerplate and and noise to be able to be very expressive about what we are actually trying to uh, accomplish here. So another technique that we are trying to are using to um, to reduce the noise and focus on the important stuff is. Uh, Computation expressions, whether that's working with tasks, async, or in this case, results. Um, here we have some validation logic for checking if this uh, command can be turned into an event. And uh, even though you've never seen this code before, and uh, in my case, some of the people I show this code to might even don't, might not even know programming or haven't done it for many years, you can sort of on a uh, surface look see what we are trying to validate here we're validating for our to see if the start date is valid or uh, and the same for the end dates and for the year uh, is this a valid year for taxation and uh, yeah just using language constructs to uh, remove noise and focus on the the domain rules same thing here we have this function that uh, takes in uh, takes in um, something that is used for uh, who did uh, uh, trigger this event. Is, was it a user or was it another system? And in, in many cases, it's just print out the display name and it's easy. But we know that we have some systems that either have quite an ugly display name or we want to uh, call it something else. So then we can. Uh, use this when syntax to uh, change the logic for some systems. But uh, here there's a lot of like, this distracts from what we are trying to do here. 
well, sure, it's nice to see that it's the display that name that we check, but this isn't really important in this context when we try to see the, the display name logic. So what we can do is that we can extract this into an active pattern, and uh, um, and then you can read it like system data import. Well, then we'll we'll just call it data import uh, on the outside as well. And um, in this simple case, that might not be such a big difference, but when we have 10, 20 cases, or at least two to three, it becomes much clearer to do it this way. A note on something that I would uh, caution a little bit about is uh, the passing in of functions to other functions. Uh, after all, we are doing functional programming, and it might be nice to send around functions and doing stuff with that. And uh, it all comes down to our readability when we are coding and debugging, trying to find out what went wrong or how, how the code is behaving. Uh, sending in functions is really great for managing dependencies, whether that's logging or it's writing to some storage or whatever it might be. And it might also be very nice for composing, chaining, uh, working with lists and mapping through them. But we would, uh, from our own experience, caution a little bit about doing too much of this with your domain functions and your pure functions. You might be able to, to represent something with this and it might, uh, in some cases be the right uh, solution but in many so, um, in many situations it's uh, it, it splits up your domain logic and when you are stepping through what is happening uh, you it's uh, like reading a, a novel where you oh check page 120 to find the rest of the story uh, it's uh, not uh, the best uh, experience uh, you really want to um, have a natural flow of our, of our your business rules and your domain. Outside of that, it's fine to do whatever, but be a little bit uh, careful about that. So that was a quick whirlwind tour of how we are using uh, F-sharp. Uh, we feel that F-sharp is well suited for writing readable code. And we feel that this readability is uh, important to maintainability and extendability of a complex system that you work with for a long period of time. For our part, we are still able to extend our system and handle new kinds of customer cases and new regulations and also keep our bug count relatively low um, in this uh, pretty important uh, piece of software for our company. Um, I also hope that you've gotten a few uh, tastes and small ideas on how you can work with uh, uh, work with F# -sharp to 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 enhance your the readability of your code base. That was uh, uh, quick. I might have talked a little bit fast since this is uh, quite exciting for me. But uh, I hope you had fun and. Uh, Looks like I have time some for, for some questions, if you have any. I'll start with uh, Beth, actually, that uh, asked if I learned F-sharp at university. No, actually, I learned F-sharp uh, um, at my first day at work. I, I was asked if I wanted the challenge. And uh, uh, very mystical about it. And I said, yeah, sure. And uh, I've been an F# -sharp developer ever since. I did do a lot of .NET uh, and C# -sharp with Azure functions, so the the transition to a functional language was maybe a bit smaller. But um, apart from that, I had taken one course where we had a little bit of Scala. So no no F# -sharp in uh, university for me. I may have one personal question. Uh, do you remember what was the the, the goal that that thing that got you into F# -sharp, when you saw it say like oh that's so cool I want to spend more time on it what was the gateway drug oh, <laughs> the gateway drug yes <laughs> well it, it's um it's a journey in multiple steps right uh, so uh, my first like realization when I I I think I used uh, 
Scott Larsen's uh, uh, F Sharp for Fun and Profit, and I had this uh, list of how to transform the one kind of uh, uh, list to another kind of list, and I had to learn like the maps and the collects and the filters and try find and and just building out that arsenal was like after a week of uh, of figuring that part out, it was maybe the first one, and then uh, I had a lot of fun when I was writing property-based texts for uh, property uh-huh. taxes. So uh, that was a nice combo as well. Nice, nice. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I, so so I, th- I really liked your your uh, example with the all Norwegian discriminated union. <laughs> I think it really makes complete sense. I mean, if, if you're sort of working with, with Norwegian customers, um, how often do you actually sort of get to show this to non-programmers is this something well, you ever ever do, or? Well, I would say it is um, a quick glance. It's on a weekly basis, and uh, the more in-depth looks is maybe once a month or something like that, where we are when we are working on the whiteboard and trying to really find out the what are the rules and what are we trying to model here, and uh, so that uh, it becomes correct, then it might be more uh, easy to to just pull up some code and check but uh yeah on a weekly basis we do a, a, sm- a small check at least i would say so we, it, it, out it works really, really nice for our case where we work very closely with our uh, our domain expert so it turns out you don't need a phd in computer science to do f sharp <laughs> but you do need norwegian <laughs> I don't know which one's easier though yeah i would say it's like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I've at some point tried to use check in F sharp code, and it does even support the accents, which I didn't expect. <laughs> okay, we've got a serious question from Jan. Yeah. Have any of your non devs started to help model with uh, the domain with, with F sharp? Yeah, I would say that we are doing it as collaborative uh, effort, uh, the modeling. And uh, it might not be that they are sitting with the F sharp code, but it's like, uh, we we are sitting with that while they are talking to us from the computer right next to me, uh, and then we are uh, bouncing ideas off each other and what if we do this and and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, they um, they haven't started uh, writing code in F Sharp quite yet. Uh, That's cool. all right. That can happen over yeah. time. <laughs> All right, maybe the last question. Uh, do you have any kind of advice to newcomers, to anyone who's after your amazing tool thinking about jumping into F Sharp and starting doing some nice short code with a lot of domain expression there? Like, what, 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 do, what do you recommend? Like, go to Scott Lushin's site or read his book or just write some code or amplify F Sharp? What, what would you personally, as you as a Lars, what would you suggest to start with? I, I would do all of those things that you said <laughs> there, right there. But um, uh, like, try, try to model something uh, small and just for me, it was like try to model a property and all the lists and uh, all buildings and the square areas uh, and such like that. And then you might uh, jump into maybe do advent of code. I, I learned a lot uh, uh-huh. doing uh, that kind of uh, tasks in F Sharp and. Uh, yeah, just play around with it. Uh, use the interactive, uh, uh, the interactive code, uh, so that you can get this instant feedback. Perfect, perfect. Thanks a lot. I'll look if you have any other question, but I think we are again on time, which is this is. I this think is... there's some error in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> the time is running slowly, or something. You know, when we say it out loud, next talk will be either shorter or way longer nah, because nah, we're nah, yeah. now I'm, pulling I'm, I'm the like. Sure, I'm sure the next talk is going to be as professional as all the previous talks. Okay. So thanks again, Lars, for joining us. Thanks. Thank you, incredible. and thanks for the great work with the conference. Thanks a lot. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs>